With animals thriving in nearly every part of the world, humans are able to observe some of the most unique creatures. So today on Factspace, we're looking at an outstanding species, the various types of wolves that inhabit regions globally. Wolves are canines that belong to the carnivorous family Canidae, which is also inclusive of domesticated dogs, foxes, coyotes, and jackals. There are three specific types of wolves called the gray wolf, the Ethiopian wolf, and the red wolf. These wolves share many of the same qualities, however, they're separated by specific distinctions that include a variety of subspecies. The gray wolf, also called a timber wolf, is the most commonly heard of species. Native to North America and some parts of Asia, Europe, and Africa, the gray wolf's appearance differs greatly depending on its location. Nonetheless, it typically stays true to its name with a primarily grayish-brown coat, which can also transcend between browns, reds, whites, and blacks. They generally weigh within 80 to 100 pounds and can span between 4 to 6 feet in length. With a more slender body, the gray wolf may not have the impactful size and speed of some animals, but their power and stamina allow them to be strong predatory creature. Due to their larger paws, this species is able to thrive in any region, under any conditions, and within any type of land from solid ground to soft snow. In addition to the physical potential of the gray wolf's limber torso and legs, they also have great strength in their bite. Unlike smaller canines such as domesticated and wild dogs, the gray wolf has almost three times the intensity behind their chomp. The gray wolf, sometimes referred to as the common wolf for their widespread population, is easily able to adapt to new places. They can thrive everywhere from grasslands to mountains as long as they have the basic means to survive, food, and an adequate space to live. Unfortunately, the gray wolf has been forced out of many of its habitats and has gone off and on the endangered species list for years. In most states in the United States of America, where gray wolves primarily live, the species is protected by the Endangered Species Act. However, in some areas this law has been revoked. While wolves are usually able to live without direct intervention from humans, they are often disturbed in their homes by hunters and growing civilizations. Similarly, despite being protected in most areas, gray wolves who wander near people or disturb their properties and livestock are often killed. Interestingly enough, this species thrives greatly in some areas, where people are allowed to hunt them due to overpopulation, while they are sparse and struggling in others. Like with their habitats, gray wolves are also able to adapt to the food available to them. They're willing to hunt everything from smaller rodents to large mammals, along with everything in between. Because of this, the gray wolf is considered to be a well-balanced animal that benefits the ecological community due to its diverse lifestyle. No matter what they're hunting, the gray wolf prefers to chase down its prey instead of attacking an immobile animal. When bringing home food for pups, wolves act similarly to birds by regurgitating the meal until the young canines become six months of age and learn how to hunt by themselves. A litter of puppies usually consists of between four to six babies, while packs generally range around seven members, but can move up to 15 in some cases. With several distinct differences, the Himalayan wolf is a newer type of wolf that is a subspecies of the gray wolf. Unlike its relative, the Himalayan wolf thrives primarily in India, such as in Jammu, the Himalayas, and Nepal, as well as Mongolia and China. Despite the fact that they dwell in many areas, the name of this species is derived from the fact that they were initially discovered in the Himalayas and thought to have only lived there until packs were found elsewhere. Due to the newness of the species, Himalayan wolf packs tend to range in smaller sizes and are less territorial than other canines. Unlike the gray wolf, the Himalayan wolf is a bit less diverse in its meal selection and chooses to prey on smaller to medium-sized creatures instead of larger animals. Himalayan wolves often cross paths with, and even create packs with, Indian wolves, another subspecies of the gray wolf. Indian wolves are much smaller than most, ranging in around only 3 feet in length as opposed to the gray wolf's ability to be double this size. They typically live in desert-like areas in India, which explain the short fur they have as an adaptation for their hot surroundings. Unlike most species, Indian wolves are much less territorial and pack-like than their relatives. They prefer to individually hunt small rodents and animals, likely because of their size, and are much less specific about the territory that they cover. People who study wolves often use this to explain why Indian wolves seldom howl, a common occurrence for the wolf species. Although it is a unique and confusing feat, it's theorized that the Indian wolf simply doesn't care enough to make noise over the land they've claimed and are far more easygoing than other wolf types. The Arctic wolf is another subspecies to the gray wolf. However, unlike the Himalayan and Indian wolves, this species is much more distinctive. Their pure white coloring is nearly unmatchable, although other species can produce an off-white or somewhat white coat. 
Arctic wolves can also be accented with yellowish, black, and gray colors. However, their snowy fur typically matches their environment. The Arctic wolf has two layers to their gorgeous fur in order to keep them from freezing in the cold climates where they live. The inner layer helps them to retain heat and block out water and moisture, while the outer layer can vary in thickness depending on the time of year and the weather. The rest of their body is also specifically designed to withstand below freezing temperatures, with paw pads that are made to grip snowy and icy surfaces, and smaller ears that prevent the cold from seeping in. People who study wolves continue to debate and theorize how Arctic wolves came to be. The main belief is that when the gray wolf species branched off millions of years ago during the last ice age, some of these wolves made a permanent stay in icy regions. Because of this, the animal was forced to adapt and evolve to match survival in its surroundings, thus giving the arctic wolf its self-warming capabilities. Most arctic wolves are native to Alaska, however, they can also be found in Canada and Greenland in low populations. In Alaska, arctic wolves thrive since humans are not able to live in the areas that the wolves do, preventing their habitats and food sources from being destroyed as they are in other places. This additionally helps to keep the balance between wolf packs, as arctic wolves are an incredibly territorial species. Because of the barrenness of the land, these wolves are able to cover hundreds of miles of space and can usually coexist with other packs quite easily. One issue that is sometimes faced by arctic wolves, and the core reason behind their varying pack size of just a few wolves up to around 20, is a reliable food source. Generally, in areas where food is accessible, it's usually in the form of larger animals that have also been able to thrive in the cold, meaning arctic wolves must hunt in medium to large sized packs to take on their prey. Their powerful jaws allow them to completely rip apart an animal, and the size of their kill can usually feed an entire pack. On the other end of the world is the Ethiopian wolf, a reddish brown wolf that people often think are foxes due to their stunning coats. Like their name claims, the species is native to Ethiopia and the surrounding areas in Africa the only place in the world that the Ethiopian wolf lives. They are usually found struggling to survive in the mountains, however, some of them have adapted to plains. While some wolves are loner animals within their pack, the Ethiopian wolf thrives on socialization. Possibly due to this, they are not as territorial as other wolf species and can coexist with others more easily. This could also be because of the very few Ethiopian wolves left alive, with roughly 550 wolves who have reached adulthood left. Despite being protected by endangerment laws, many Ethiopian families have access to weaponry that allows them to hunt the wolves, with some doing so simply to put food on the table. Another contributor to the species' low population comes from 1990, when a raging rabies epidemic broke out within the Ethiopian wolf colonies. An estimated 400 wolves were killed by this deadly virus, which originated near Bale Mountain National Park. The Born Free Foundation stepped in with vaccinations free of charge, which helped put a halt to what had terrified many people and dwindled the numbers of the Ethiopian wolf population greatly. The Red Wolf shares a similar color appearance to the Ethiopian wolf, hence its distinctive name. Their coats are almost always reddish, while some vary into browns as well. Those that differ from the cinnamon-colored coat are usually mistaken for other wolf species because of their inclusive name. However, two factors can help determine the Red Wolf. The first is that they always have white accents around their face, and the second is that their ears are unusually large in comparison to other wolf species. The red wolf is a North American native, but its species has been listed as critically endangered. They are most popularly known to exist in Louisiana and Texas. However, they were also brought to North and South Carolina after a conservation project helped the animal begin thriving again. The areas in which they live have become off-limits to hunters, but a major issue currently being faced is the rate of heartworm in red wolves living in the Carolinas. Like the Ethiopian wolf, the red wolf is a social animal within its pack. They have a set mindset on the way a pack is set up, with leaders all the way to newborn pups falling into a specific role. Despite enjoying interaction with one another, red wolves are particular about their territory and will mark it to keep other packs away with their scent. Both red wolves and Ethiopian wolves focus on prey that is smaller, with red wolves preferring to hunt alone. Their food reflects the size and hunting preferences, as they cannot take on larger animals alone. However, they have been known to hunt livestock and other medium to large animals in groups from time to time. Perhaps one of the most unique and controversial wolves in the world, the eastern wolf, is another distinctive species, like the gray wolf, Ethiopian wolf, and red wolf. It has often been the subject of debate and questioning as to where it originated from, with many people believing it to be a subspecies to the gray wolf. Despite this idea, the eastern wolf has since been established as its own species by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. Eastern wolves are found primarily in Canada. They have also been reintroduced into certain areas of the United States in order to help facilitate a larger population over time. 
In Canada, they are most well known in Ontario in the Algonquin Provincial Park, where they are protected from hunters. These pack animals cover a wide range of land wherever they go and are a fiercely loyal, social species of wolf. Because of this, the eastern wolf howls frequently to protect their pack and keep other packs from encroaching upon their vast territories. Eastern wolves also enjoy hunting alone and in groups, making the range of food options quite diverse. Alone, they may go after smaller rodents and animals that fit their physical capabilities, while together in packs they may go after deer, moose, and in unique cases, bears. While the adults hunt, the young pups are left on their own in a safe location until the rest of the pack returns with food. This is not something normally practiced by wolf packs, as they usually leave behind a member or two to look after the young. Because of this, if a pup stumbles out of its hiding place, it will usually be killed by a larger predator. Wolves everywhere face endangerment, particularly at the hands of humans. Despite serious laws set in place to protect these beautiful species from dying out, humans quickly become annoyed with the wolf's widespread diet affecting their livestock and homes. Because of this, many humans will hunt wolves whenever they are able, adding significantly to the low populations throughout the world. In the future, plans are in motion to continue helping the wolf population grow around the world. The goal is to help these majestic animals to thrive in their natural environments once more and ensure that these wild canines stick around for a long time.